YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's little bill here with another video and in this video I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that happened yesterday between the Ravens and the Bears with the Ravens squeaking out a victory that has some last minute drama but that's something that we've all grown accustomed to when it comes to these Baltimore Ravens. Uh, team keep it clean just another quick reminder the streams are back on starting next week we back because i know we missed the stream for the dolphins game couldn't stream the game yesterday we back next week for sunday night football so anyway um i love y'all and i appreciate y'all being patient and i appreciate y'all understanding too that things happen uh but anyway in this game uh the ravens they they went into the game um with the, the depleted like extra depleted like we know this team has already been depleted we know that but yesterday of course Lamar Jackson and his sickness that was that Hollywood with a apparent thigh injury I don't know if his thigh or maybe his hamstring we'll see but Hollywood was out too so it was like oh then then Jimmy Smith he was out and I was like what then Anthony Averitt he was out, and I was like what like I already knew, like oh yeah, this uh, this I don't I didn't even feel like it would be a trap game yesterday. Like if if the Ravens would have lost yesterday, I I wouldn't have even been like really surprised, and I wouldn't even have been too mad. I mean, I obviously wouldn't want them to lose, but given the situation with all those people being out, it's like whoa, like yikes, and a lot a lot of them I didn't expect to be out, but they were. Uh, but the Ravens, they they still manage uh, to win. Tyler Huntley, his first NFL start. Not his first NFL experience, but his first NFL start. Um, and he got a win. Uh, he was 26 for 36, 219 yards uh, and an interception. No touchdowns, uh, but the interception. But with Tyler Huntley, one thing that I, I talked about in the preview was that there was no loyalty with him. There's no loyalty. So he was spreading the ball around. I love how he was taking some check downs. I love how they got it to Devontae Freeman uh, in the flats. Because there's this play that the Ravens run where Devontae Freeman, and maybe it's just coincidence. Maybe Lamar doesn't feel like he's open or whatnot. But there's a play that the Ravens run a lot where Devontae Freeman will come in motion. And he'll come, come in motion, come across Lamar, and then Lamar will snap it. And Devontae Freeman will run. So, so to, I guess it's kind of like a wheel route, I guess. But Devontae Freeman will run, and then Lamar will fake it to him, but then he'll usually go somewhere else. So sometimes he won't even fake it to him. But Lamar usually never takes that. But yesterday, uh, Tyler Huntley, he took it. A couple times, I believe. A couple times. Uh, so that was nice to see. Um, and now I, I did see some of his passes. They were sailing a little bit. They were sailing a bit. Um, but again... It's his first start, and he just found out, like, a, a little bit before the game, like, a couple hours before the game, like, oh, you up. He said Lamar sent him that text. <laughs> when you know, you know. When you ain't feeling it, you 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 know. You try, and you hope you're like, oh, but you, no. Go ahead and take over. I know you got us. So I, I was I was proud of Tyler Huntley, man. I was, I, and I loved the post-game interview. Absolutely loved it. Loved it. And you could just hear that. You heard that South Florida in him. But you also heard that uh, humility, and that's big. You could tell he appreciated the moment. Uh, he enjoyed the moment, and he, he made the most of the moment, too. Um, I, I told you, I only got to see, like, some little clips here and there of the game. I didn't get to rewatch the full game in its, in its entirety, uh, but I did. I saw the very, begin, the very beginning live and the very end live, and for the rest, uh, I got to see a little, like I said, stuff here and there. But um, at the very end... On that last drive, it's third and two. No, yes, yeah, third and two. And then Tyler Huntley throws a pass to Duvernay, incomplete. But they're like, oh, wait, 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 holding. Back it up 10 yards. And I was actually glad for that. I was glad that they, um, because it, it get, even though it backed them up 10 yards, it gave them two opportunities instead of just one to get the first down. Um, because if, they, if the penalty would have been declined, then it would have been fourth and two. You are closer to a first down, but there's also more pressure because if you don't get it, that's it. 
But so it backed him up third and 12. So Tyler Huntley had been sacked a lot. He'd been sacked like five, six times. Um, so I said, oh, man, well, I mean, you might as well have had him in the number eight jersey because the same thing happens to Lamar. That offensive line just can't block for him. And I wonder how healthy Patrick McCarry is or is not. But anyway, um, he, on that third and 12, he snapped the ball, pressure right away, of course. So he's running, scrambling, running, 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 running. And I'm like, oh, boy, uh-oh. And then he just throws it. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, that, that ball's getting ready to go out of bounds. But I'm watching the ball. I'm watching the camera. I'm like, hold up now. Oh, no. And then Sammy Watkins, he, he, he catches the ball. But not only catches the ball, like my boy Cam Neal pointed out, he caught the ball and he braced for the hit. So he secured the ball. He didn't try to do no little one hit. No, he caught the ball and secured it and braced for the hit. So he made the catch and then got whacked. And that was a great play by Tyler Huntley, a clutch play by Tyler Huntley, and a clutch play from Sammy Watkins. So I, I would say that he's officially back. Now he's like last week in the Miami Dolphins, he wasn't back there. But now he's officially back. And that was a beautiful thing to see. Uh, it gave me, um, it, it just reminded me of the, uh, the Lions game. Uh, obviously, different situation, kind of, but it reminded me of the Lions game. Um, the, the big 4th and 19 play uh, where Lamar hit Sammy Watkins for. So Sammy showing, hey, I, I, I'm clutch, yo. I, I got you in the clutch. Just hit me. Let me know. So shout out to Sammy. And then a couple plays later, was it the very next play? It might have been the next play. I did not like the play call, um, but it worked. It, it worked uh, when they called the, uh, the, the draw to Devontae Freeman. I didn't like the play, but it worked. So, hey, I always tell y'all that regardless if a play works or not, I, I'll let you know if I don't like it. But I, I'm glad that they, they did that yesterday. Uh, I'm glad that it worked out because uh, that ended up being a game-winning touchdown uh, after the Ravens looked like they had given up <laughs> the game-winning touchdown uh, a couple of the, the drive before. And it was fourth and eleven, and you live by die by, live by die by. We're gonna talk about Wink in a lot more detail in another video uh, later on this week. But Wink, live by die by. Chris Westry in this game, um, he struggled, he struggled. But even with Chris Westry struggling, this is why it's so important that coaches are willing to adjust. You don't have Marcus Peters. You don't have Jimmy Smith. You don't have Anthony Avert. This is literally the most action that Chris Westry has ever gotten in the NFL, well, as a Raven. This is the most action he's ever got. And he did make some nice plays in, especially toward the end when um, I think it was Mooney caught that one hand ball on the sideline and Chris Westry said, hold up. No, 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 no. Pow. Incomplete. All right, let's go. But when you, um, if he's struggling, which he had been, because uh, I've seen a lot of people talking about the 4th and 11 play. Some people are, are like, hey, well, that's on Chris Westry. What are you doing going for that double move in that situation? Why would you bite on that if it's 4th and 11? They have to get 11 yards. What are you doing biting on a double move? But for me, I'm like, I understand that and I get that. But why, if this corner is struggling, even if the corner wasn't struggling, why are they putting him in that position? Just no, no help up top. Zero help. Like zero help. All, all three corners that were backed up, zero help. Why are we putting them in that situation? While this game was on, my guy, JT, had texted me. He was like, um, he while Justin Fields was still playing, obviously, he was like, I, I don't know how, I don't know if Justin Fields is going to make it through this game because his body language is, is telling me that is, he's not. And then I saw like a couple minutes after that, they're like, oh, Andy Dalton's in the game. And I was like, oh, uh-oh. When you say Andy, like Andy Dalton, like Ravens fans, that Andy Dalton name, that, 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 that rings a lot of scary bells. A lot of scary bells because we know what Andy Dalton has done to the Ravens in the past. Uh, we know what Andy Dalton is capable of. Even though, like, yeah, he went with the Cowboys. He left the Bengals were like, all right, bye-bye, Andy. And he went to the Cowboys as a backup, ended up becoming a starter because Dax injury. Went to the Bears as a starter and ended up becoming a starter, but then he went to Justin Fields, and then now Justin Fields, we'll see what happens with him. But Andy Dalton might end up being a starter again. But 
we know that this guy, he can make some plays happen, especially against the Ravens. He's not scared of the Ravens. And both actually, and, and, and in the defense in this game, there was a lot of stuff that the Bears actually missed. They missed some opportunities. Now, they sure got some, but they, they certainly missed some too. Um, but with Andy Dalton, he, uh, on the big play, it was a screenplay. It was a screenplay. <laughs> it was a screenplay to the wide receiver and the tackling. The Ravens, they, they tackled each other, but they were like, no, you know, what are we going to tackle the receiver for? For what? Why? What's the point? Let's tackle each other. But they Bears had them looking foolish on that play. But thank goodness that they, uh, whew, those late game heroics by Huntley and Watkins and, and just the whole team at the end, they were able to get the win. Um, Justin Tucker, I had lost my train of thought with his three field goals. Uh, that was clutch because he made two in the first half because uh, the score was like 6-0. Bears had actually missed the field. Oh, see? Now, it's a game of inches. It's such a game of inches because every play matters so much in football. Bears had missed a field goal. So we're looking at this score. It was 16-13. The touchdown that the Ravens got at the very end, that could have actually been to tie the game. It could have been. It wasn't. But it could have been to tie the game. I was telling my guy, once the uh, once Ravens, once they got their touchdown, the uh, the the Devontae Freeman, which ended up being a game winning touchdown. I, I told my guy JT, I said, "Oh man, I I think they're going to overtime." I I really did. I did not have confidence in the defense to make the stop. Tyus Bowser, he uh, had the game of his life yesterday. He was like, "Man, all, all y'all been talking about the pass rush recently. Y'all been talking about the scheme. Hey, let me let me show you that. It, hey, it, it's scheme all day over here, baby. We're gonna make this thing work." And Tyus Bowser was getting after it. Uh, so shout out to him, man. Uh, he was acting like Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. He was acting like they were Mario. All right, little Nintendo joke. Anyway, um, and he got the, the game ceiling sack. Uh, and I was glad that he got that because, again, for me, I, I, didn't, ha I didn't get to go through the stress that I know a lot of y'all went through. Because like I said, I, I only saw the very beginning and the very end of the game. So I didn't get to go through the whole process live. Um, but so I, the, all the stress that usually happens in these games, I didn't get to really experience it. Um, but I know like seeing that was the nice sigh of relief because even if it, if it would have been a Hail Mary, there's so many things that you got to think about when it comes to the Hail Mary. You obviously got to think about if your team gives up the touchdown. So while the ball is in the air, you're thinking about it and you're scared, you're wondering, you're like, oh, these plays. They don't really happen too often, but oh boy, this would be the day what happens to my team. And then on top of that, then you got to think about a pass interference. You know, pass interference, obviously everybody's in the end zone or really close to the end zone. If it's pass interference, the ball's right there at the one. So you got to think about that, like, oh man, I hope nobody pushes. And then you think about the tip drill, like, oh, hopefully nobody tips the ball up and then one of their receivers catches it, like what happened with Andy Dalton and A.J. Green back in 2000. Thousand was it fourteen? Was it the Steve Smith senior year? I remember when James ahead of boat tipped it up, and then AJ Green said, "Oh, okay, cool." So it's so many things that you think about with that, but it it's just nice that it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, Ravens they they got a win. They got an ugly win, but they got a win. Uh, but this win does not take the um. It does not take away the fact that the Ravens have a lot to clean up. A lot. Now, of course, a win is a win, which is great. Uh, but it, a, a lot of stuff that they have to clean up is inexcusable stuff. It's, in, it's inexcusable stuff. Um, just putting players in, in bad position. And you, 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 you barely got away with it. You didn't get away with it last week against the Dolphins. But you barely got away with it against the Bears. Now you play the Browns, the Browns, the Steelers, the Bengals, the Packers, and the Rams. You ain't getting away with the silly stuff against none of those teams. None of them. So Ravens, they, they need to clean it up, and they need to clean it up now. Or else 
just like uh, it comes to being like with, with the end of the videos, it's going to be the same thing when it comes to the playoffs. And they'll be out.